Hi, this is George Alger with another episode of OurVentura.com. And today I'll be interviewing Craig Shields, who is the author of the new book, Is Renewable Really Doable? Welcome, Craig. Thanks for having me on the show, George. All right, so the book is about renewable energy. And before exactly. we get into some of the details of it, let's just take, uh, take a quick look at renewable energy. Okay. What is it? Renewable energy is energy that comes from renewable sources. So we are aware of the fact that when we extract oil out of the ground and turn it into gasoline, we're taking a fossil fuel, something that took a billion years to get there. Um, so that's not renewable. When that's, when that's gone, it's gone forever. Um, you could say the same about natural gas, about coal. Um, renewable energy means it's derived from, as I say, renewable sources, sources that won't go away. The sun, for instance, is going to be burning in the sky long after we're here. So thus, solar energy and the other kinds of energy that are derived from the sun, like the wind as an example, wind energy, are renewable. Good. Now, why aren't we seeing more renewable energy used in our modern world? Well, the energy industry is the biggest, most powerful group of people on the planet. And guess what? They don't want to change. They like their monopolistic positions. And here in the United States, as an example, they employ more lobbyists to keep things the way they are than any other industry in Washington, D.C. So there's an enormous amount of pressure keeping things from changing. Okay. Now let's touch on your book. Okay. So what is the book about? Well, I pride myself on being fair-minded. I do wind up with viewpoints that I have uh, gathered from discussions with hundreds and hundreds of different people and reading thousands of articles over the years that I've been doing this. But I, I, I really try to be as fair-minded as I possibly can. So what my job, on behalf of myself and my readers, is to interview a variety of different people with different viewpoints. So I just came back from Washington, D.C., um, talking to the right-wing think tank, the Cato Institute. Uh, but in the book, there, you'll notice that there are kind of left-of-center perspectives having to do with economics, environmentalism, et cetera. So it's a blend. Okay, so it's a blend by way of a number of interviews. How many different interviews? In this one, I believe there are eight. Okay. Right. And how did you select those experts to talk with? Well, first, let me just say this. Renewable energy is one of the most interesting discussions you can possibly have on this planet because there's so many different disciplines that touch it. So obviously a lot of it's science. A lot of it is the fact that the sun provides the earth with 6,000 times more energy every day than all 7 billion of us can possibly use. So all we're really looking for is a solution that is that fraction, 1 over 6,000, efficient in harvesting that, uh, harnessing that, the sun's energy, and we can all go home. We can all forget we ever heard about you know, fossil fuels and nuclear and so forth. So that's the good news. So technologically, there are different ways of getting at this. Okay, so there, there are engineers developing better and better practices for doing this, and I, the, my first responsibility is to help engineers, help readers understand that. So, for instance, we have engineers and physicists in this book, so uh, without which it's a kind of empty conversation. In other words, how exactly are we going about the challenge? of becoming better, more efficient, lower cost in terms of developing solar and wind and geothermal, hydrokinetic, biomass, five different essential macro flavors, if you will, of renewable energy. So that's number one. So, in, but in addition to scientists, then it gets into, then it gets even more interesting. Then you've got um, the environmentalists, the people who are, who are presenting the challenge from the standpoint of this is something, not only here's how you do it, but here's exactly why we need to do it. Here are going to be the consequences if you don't do it. So forming the imperative to migrate from these dirty, dangerous fossil fuels to clean energy. What's, why do we need to do that? So there's economics. Um, in other words, the fact that this right now, this is a little bit more expensive. Who's going to pay for it? Well, that's an interesting discussion. And then the, that gets into the politics of this thing. If it is more expensive, why do we need to do this? What's the matter with continuing with the status quo? Fantastically interesting mix of people. And then to make it even more complex, you mentioned the environmentalists. And of course, to me, I would normally associate the whole environmentalist movement to be pro-renewable energy. But I understand that, of course, there are aspects of 
environmental uh, causes or perspectives that would be against some parts of renewable energy. I suppose, uh, and uh, you're absolutely right, and this is something that I can't explain, to be honest with you. I, I understand that there are extremists in every, I mean, in terms of table manufacturing, I'm sure you can find extremists who just think that ta all tables should be upside down or something like that. But just as inexplicable as that is, I find it hard to understand why somebody would say, for instance, we want to build in the, in the southwestern deserts where we have tons of sun here in the United States. We want to build solar thermal, which means essentially you're building mirrors that focus the sun's uh, energy on a certain point or a certain line. Well, that provides shade where shade wasn't before you built the thing. That in potentially endangers the desert tortoise. And I'm extremely sensitive to things like that, but not to the extent that I say, well, look, the, if you don't do this, what are we doing? We're, we're, fi we're changing the climate on the planet. We're filling our oceans and our skies with toxins. There are 13,200 people dead this year who were alive last year simply because of breathing the aromatics that come from coal-fired power plants. So I think it's a, it's a very difficult, if you, if you want to say, I want something that has zero environmental impact, you, you, there is nothing that has zero environmental impact. We have to make tough choices, and I certainly I can't begin to explain the, the rationale for that level of extremism. All right, so the book contemplates the, the technology, the politics, and the, the economics of bringing renewable energy into the modern world. Would you say they're all kind of an equal challenge, or is one of those more prominent than the other two? Well, right now, it's largely political. We're lining up here in the United States, anyway, for a, uh, a presidential election in 2012 where this whole thing is just an unbelievable political football. The uh, Republican Party is, try is openly trying to dismantle the Environmental Protection Agency and the Department of Energy uh, because they think government regulation is necessarily intrusive. Um, I suppose the Obama administration has done a, a better job than any that had, uh, had come before it in terms of a progressive environmental stance, but this is, uh, this is a big deal right now politically. Having said that, I, I go back to the technology issues. So for instance, when, right now we're at a point where if you want to build a, an incremental megawatt of, of energy generation in the United States. It's almost the exact same price to do it in wind as it is to do it in coal. Now there's a problem with wind. Um, wind is intermittent and coal isn't. Okay, So there, there are issues with this. But, but my point is simply this. When the technology improves to the point that the cost has come down to where these things on an apples to apples basis truly are cost competitive, the, there's no amount of politics that's going to say, oh, I want, I, want to, I want to spend more and I want to ruin our environment. That's not going to wash. I mean, Americans may not be you know, the t sharpest tools in the shed, but nobody's stupid enough to believe that. You know what I'm saying? All right, so I see. So the technology when it brings the cost down will actually eclipse the political challenges. Yes, yes, exactly right. So the, the point is we will not be burning coal in the year 2050, okay? So in other words, we will get there. The question isn't are we going to do this? The question is exactly when, who's gonna make a buck in the process, and how much damage will we have done to this planet in the process? So in other words, there are people who simply don't care. They're billionaires who wanna make another few billion dollars at the expense of the health and safety of everybody living on this planet now and in the decades to come. Now, I don't, I don't throw around the word evil easily and lightly, but you can't, what else can you call that? So in other words, the, the, the people who are saying, I simply don't care the ruination I'm causing to all living things here and in the future simply because I want to make more money, that doesn't wash with me. So, there, I mean, there is some, a lot of controversy in the book. That's not one of them. I don't, you, you, can, you find it hard to find people who will come out and admit that they believe that. But when you look at their actions, that's exactly what is driving the status quo in terms of the energy industry. All right. Since um, environmentalism is one aspect of this, and a lot of folks might equate uh, climate change with environmentalism, can you just right. comment on environmentalism and, or more specifically, climate change relative to renewable energy? Sure. Well, I would think that climate change is one of the key drivers um, with respect to the migration of from fossil fuels 
especially fossil fuels. Nuclear, by the way, is not, doesn't create carbon, doesn't re-admit carbon. Uh, it's got its own problems, but the carbon's not one of them. Um, so the migration from fossil fuels to clean energy is largely, I would say global climate change is one of four or five red hot issues with respect to this thing. So in other words, the fact that 97 plus percent of, of climate scientists tell us that we, if, if we don't make a change in our, our extracting billion year old carbon and putting it back into our atmosphere, we're gonna ruin this planet. Almost every single one of them, 97 plus percent of the climate scientists who have been looking at this thing for the last 40 years are telling us that exact same thing. That's why I believe it, by the way. I have no, I'm a reporter, I'm not a, I'm a scientist. I, I'm a guy who speaks, who knows enough about this to go get uh, people who know what they're talking about in front of me so that I can ask them questions like that. But I'm extremely convinced, simply because they're extremely convinced that this is an issue. So yes, that is certainly, that's one of the top issues. But the healthcare thing is the other is something else that I talked about. In other words, it is true that people are dropping like flies. We have uh, skyrocketing rates of childhood cancer that are attributable. What, what do we think they're attributable to? Obviously, we're doing something differently in terms of the things that we ingest, whether it's food, whether it's our air, etc. Um, so uh, there are different reasons to want to do this, but and certainly climate issues are one of them. Good. Coming back to politics for a moment here, in, and actually its relationships to finance, we have concerns about national security that are also um, motivating a, a move away from fossil fuels. Like, could you comment on that? Sure. Well, you're, I think you're talking primarily about oil. So the, the fact is that we, at, at, at terrific expense, both financially and in terms of human, lo loss of human life, we, our, our military is about uh, maintaining access to oil. So in other words, until we, which by the way, so we're borrowing a billion dollars a day to buy foreign oil. We're sending that money to people to, which empowers people who purely and openly want to kill us. So this is not a smart policy in and of itself. Um, but so yes, the, the whole thing about oil is largely, we need this thing to keep our lifestyles afloat. Um, a, a, an administration that, on whose watch we run out of oil and we have all the social chaos associated with that is not going to get reelected. So this is the number one priority, is maintaining access to oil um, until we can make that go away. And that's, of course, what the whole renewable energy movement is about. Good. So we're just about out of time here for this segment. What is a primary message that you'd like to convey as either part of this book or part of all of the talks and articles that you write about regarding the subject? Well, I would say that there is an imperative, and it doesn't really matter. If you don't believe in, in global climate change, that's fine. If you're with one of the, with the two or three percent of, of climate scientists who doesn't believe in this thing, that's fine. Just pick another reason. There really isn't an imperative to do this. But what I would say, what I would tell the folks watching this is to whether it's through this book or something else, come up to speed on this. There's a lot to learn. And I'll tell you what, I didn't walk away from a single one of these interviews without saying, that was magnificent. I learned an incredible amount in a very short period of time. So I'm constantly learning about this. I'm very motivated. I'm very turned on by that, energized by that. And I know readers will be too. This is an, it's an important topic, and everyone should have a good, fundamental working knowledge of the subject. Good. So if a uh, viewer would like to find out more, what would be a good way or a good place I could go to contact you or to learn more? Okay, the website through which this is available is 2greenenergy.com. So the number 2greenenergy.com. Good. And you can hit, the readers can simply hit contact and I'll get right back to them. And as a note, they can also get yes. the book through Amazon.com yes, and the website. Right, exactly right. Okay. Very good. Well, Craig, thank you very much for stopping by. Okay. Thanks for having me. This is George Alger with Arventura. Until we see you again, bye-bye.